Hey tubers, welcome back. Here we are, Bob Grows, beautiful South Florida, beautiful mango trees. Uh, the reason we come back here today is to show you guys my newly added on expanded deep water culture bucket system. Uh, it's recirculating as you can see from all the tubing. Uh, as you can all recall, here's my old system, it's still here. This was the basis, it's, it's ugly, but it's functional and it was a learning experience, right? Similar buckets, similar tubing. What we had here was three deep water culture, one, two, three, and one Dutch bucket. Um, this has grown fantastic. I haven't had any issues with this, but as you can see, there's clear differences, uh, specifically in the drain pipe. Uh, and I'll run through them. And I'll explain why I went that route and uh, how much it differs. So let's go over the new system real quick. It's pretty simple. What I have here are five five gallon buckets, all from Firehouse Subs. Remember, it's $2, it's food grade, and the donation goes to um, a local firehouse. So, can't get much better than that. Or you can just go give your money to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever you want. Um, the reason, I, another reason I use these is as you can see here, there's a little X right here. X marks the spot. That's where I drill it for the uni seal. Okay. So now that we went through the buckets, we have five buckets, five gallons each. Comes with the li lid. In the lid, I drill a three inch uh, hole with a hole saw, and I, I drop in a <clears throat> three inch net cup. My media is hydrogen, and some of these seeds were started in rock wool. Again, not very important. It doesn't matter how you start the seeds. It doesn't matter what media. This is just what I have. Uh, you can use cocoa, you can use perlite, you can use whatever you want. I happen to like the little pebbles and I have them. Okay, so let's move forward. For the drain and riser tube, this is one inch tubing and a one inch uni seal. Inside, you can see how the height is determined. The tube comes up to the bottom of the uh, net cup and the water level is at the bottom of the neck cup. From there, all five buckets are the same. They come down into a three inch tube, PVC, which drains into my reservoir, okay? The reason I went with three inch tubing rather than the one inch tubing is pretty obvious from here already. You see how crooked this is? You see how many connectors I have to use? Not only that, the flow isn't nearly as much. So this is much more prone to leaking, to being clogged, to backflow. Uh, it makes it much more difficult to remove the bucket because there's all kinds of connectors. On the other hand, we have this one here. This is just merely placed in here. I can just lift up the bucket and take it out. There's a significantly more flow, way less connectors, only one cap at the end and the other one drains into the reservoir. Also, I don't know if you guys see what I'm what I'm thinking here. Let's take a look. That really resembles an NFT rail, doesn't it? And NFT means nutrient film technique, similar to this. And uh, what I could do potentially is drill three inch holes in between each bucket and drop in a net cup, and I can grow smaller plants in there, nothing big, but smaller plants such as my herbs, basil, cilantro, parsley, and it will be part of the whole system and I won't have to maintain an, another system just for those herbs. Um, they won't take up much room and I think, I think it'll look nice with just extra um, plants growing in between. Obviously that has the risks of clogging up the drain tube and killing my bigger plants, so that would, uh, that would take some time and some thought and experimentation, of course, All right? So back to the main system, we covered the drain, we covered the, the buckets themselves. Uh, let's hit up the reservoir. As you can see, the reservoir is super small, right? It's puny, actually. This is only four gallons. My reservoir over there is 27, okay? The only reason I'm using this one is because this is what I have right now. And the plants aren't very big, so they should not be drinking up much of the nutrients or water, okay? Remember, each bucket is about four-fifths of the way full, so I would say there's about four gallons in each, 
five buckets, 20 gallons, plus this one, let's say about 25 gallons in the system. Optimally, I would probably put a 27 gallon or 55 gallon uh, tote here, and this would just drain, drain back in there. <clears throat> I really don't want to be checking the nutrients every day, so a bigger tote would be better. For the pump, this is just a 264 gallon pump, a uh, gallon an hour, I'm sorry. And that's from eBay, it was probably like a whole $7. And I want to say that pump's been running for at least eight months now, nonstop. It was on this system, before it was on that system. Uh, the pump seems absolutely sufficient, right? I think this is 3 8 hose coming off of it. And it's just pushed into a half inch PVC line which runs up the whole system, okay? As you can see, I drilled it, and I put little little barbs. Whether they leak or not, it's not really important because they'll just drain down into the media. Um, but there you can see the flow. It's not a mist, it's not a spray, it's just a straight stream. The reason I went with that is to prevent clogs. With this system over here, I use the drip tubing like many others have and I use a distributor just like this and this is much more prone to clogging right that little fitting right there is a mess when it gets full of sediment it is very difficult to clean because all these tubes are pressed on there so you need to cut them and rip them off this on the other hand you just lift it up and uh, stick a toothpick in there to dislodge whatever sediment or or debris is is stuck in there. And across the board, it has great flow. So I'm assuming that that pump is enough. When I designed this or did my research on this, I intended this to be able to scale. Okay, so in order to scale this, I would just obviously need to extend the drain down that way uh, and put more buckets, right? At that point, I think I would need a stronger pump but at this point, I think that pump is sufficient. We have very good flow down here. Um, this is a pretty serious stream. This is intended to be capped. This is the only way that I capped it uh, because the pressure was too high. It was blowing off my, my uh, questionable cap. So with a proper cap, it'll just be dead-ended here. It won't recirculate or anything like that. It'll just be dead-ended right there. Um, where do we go from here? <laughs> it's just it's super simple. There's not much to it. Uh, aeration. I'm not running any aeration in the system. There's no air pumps. There's nothing like that. No noisy air pumps. I'm betting on strictly just the agitation of the water. Maybe this tube here gives it a chance to oxygenate on its way down. Uh, also in here, the water is being agitated, right? With that spray, you can see little bubbles. So I think that should be sufficient. I think we're okay with the, uh, the oxygenation. I haven't, ha I haven't had a problem with that one over there, uh, even through the hottest days. Uh, there's comments that I should uh, do something to help control the temperature. Again, I haven't had a problem yet. Uh, obviously, a tote this small is going to be uh, difficult, but uh, th there's things you could do, such as bury the tote, which uh, we're on concrete here. I don't think I could do much burying or digging. Uh, you could also enclose it with something covered up so the sun doesn't hit it to try to maintain the lower the lower temperature. So let's run down here and we'll go through the plants real quick. This right here, as you can see, it's about to form some, some flowers. It's got buds on there. This is a California bell pepper that was once in my NFT system and I decided to move it over here. Um, obviously, I had to fill up the buckets with something. So this is a uh, bell pepper. We'll get to look at the roots, we'll do this on each one. All right, so the water just hits the bottom of the neck cup, and that's that. This one here, I believe, is ghost pepper. I don't know when I'm gonna eat it. Ghost pepper is super hot, but I want to grow at least one super hot variety, so ghost pepper it is. Here we can see little roots. Again, the agitation I was talking about, you can see my rock wool and the hydrogen cubes. Okay, the majority of these came from seed. I think all of these came from seed except for that one right there. Next up, we have cayenne pepper. 
I wanted to make my own red pepper flakes and have it for seasoning. Um, there we can see the, the grommet that this comes with, but these don't have roots yet, but the, the, the hydrogen is actually, I'm not sorry, the rock wool is actually in the water, so these are slowly acclimating. There's three plants there. People ask if you could have three plants in a single thing. Um, as you can see over here, there's four, and this is doing absolutely wonderful. So that's gonna be three cayenne pepper plants. Again, you could always pull them out after they grow and plant them elsewhere. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. Next up, we have my Cherokee purple tomato. This was over there at the end, but I had to make room for uh, jalapenos. So we have three peppers here, two tomatoes. There you can see the root system. Again, the water squirting in. <sighs> Nothing too interesting there. And this last one, this is the only one that didn't come from seed. This is a sucker from my old uh, early girl tomato that was down at the end. Uh, the stem cracked in half, so I took a sucker so I could continue growing it. And uh, there you see little baby roots. The flow, amazing. You see, it, there's little bubbles coming up, oxygenation. Uh, lastly, I think there's one more thing we got to cover. The water is straight tap water. I do not check it for TDS. I do not check it for pH. Okay, guys? Currently, there is no nutrients in this system. Okay, because I just I just transplanted these plants, and I want, them to, I want them to have a second to acclimate to the environment, being outside, not being in there. Uh, probably within the next couple days, I'll be adding nutrients and blasting them. What I use is Master Blend Tomato Formula which is 4 1838 it's three parts. So it's master blend. Uh, the NPK is 4 1838 There is calcium nitrate, and there's magnesium sulfate, which is Epsom salt. This, these are kits, these are master blend kits that you can buy on eBay or Amazon or wherever. And typically it's like two teaspoons or two tablespoons per five gallons. The, the instructions are there. I just mix it as the instructions say. I put it in my reservoir. Every now and then I add just water or I add nutrients. Really that is however I feel. You could measure it, you could do all that stuff so you can be spot on and have the maximum yield, okay? But I really don't wanna spend that much time just yet or invest in that equipment. So I just fill this up whenever I feel necessary. Let's see if we can get our open. And this will be ran the same way. Anyway guys, if you have any questions, leave them down here in the comment box. Like and subscribe. I thank you all for watching. Have fun growing.